Greetings, my beautiful lovelies. It's Emmy. Welcome back. Today's video is sponsored by BetterHelp, which makes professional counseling accessible, affordable, and convenient. Particularly during these times of self-isolation, social distancing, we are in a pressure cooker in our homes with our families. We're not seeing our friends. We're not getting much of a social outlet. So particularly during these times, something like BetterHelp can be such a great tool for these daily struggles in life. Everything that I shared with your counselor remains completely confidential. You can schedule help at your own time, at your own pace, and there are four modes of communication that you can speak with your counselor with. You can text, you can chat, you can video conference, or you can speak by phone. And if for any reason your counselor doesn't feel like a good fit, you can change at any time. It's very, very flexible. And if you qualify, financial aid is available. It is important to note that BetterHelp is not a crisis line. So start living a happier life. Get 10% off your first month by visiting BetterHelp, that's H-E-L-P dot com slash Emmy. And join the over 800,000 people taking control of their mental health. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Emmy. Big thanks again to BetterHelp for sponsoring this video. Now today, I'm going to be making yet another bread recipe. I'm going to be making English muffins for two reasons. Number one being, I love English muffins. Number two, you do not need an oven to make English muffins. Did you know that? I'm going to be cooking this bread in a skillet or a griddle in a pan. If you've got a stove top, you can make English muffins. Well, you also need flour and yeast and a couple other ingredients. I know those are in short supply right now, but if you have them, you can make this bread. So the recipe I'm going to be using today comes from my handy dandy Bread Baker's Apprentice. This is by Peter Reinhardt. I love this book. I love it because it's never failed me. Every recipe I've ever tried in this book has worked. I do have a couple other bread books. So both Elizabeth David and James Beard have recipes for English muffins or crumpets as they're also known as, but Peter Reinhardt's is the most thorough. So that's the recipe that I'm going to be using today. So let me walk you through the steps of how to prepare the dough. Now you can make this in a stand mixer, but if you don't have a stand mixer, you can certainly do this in a bowl. You'll just be kneading the dough by hand. So in a bowl or in the bowl of your stand mixer, combined two and a quarter cups of bread flour. So during this period of lockdown, we're not making trips to the grocery store. So I have all purpose flour and that's what I'll be using in this recipe. But in the original, Peter requests that you use bread flour. Then add half a tablespoon of granulated sugar and three quarters a teaspoon of salt. One and a quarter teaspoons of instant yeast. Now instant yeast is not the same as dry active yeast. So make sure you know what kind of yeast you have. Google the conversions depending on what type of yeast you have. So you're gonna give that a little stir to blend all the dry ingredients. And then you're gonna add one tablespoon of butter. And this should be at room temperature. And then you're gonna add three quarters of a cup to one cup of milk or buttermilk. In this case, I'm using this buttermilk product. It's a powdered buttermilk that I keep in the refrigerator and you reconstitute with just some water. I use this because it comes in really handy whenever I have a recipe that calls for buttermilk. I know some recipes say that you can use lemon juice combined with milk to create your own buttermilk, but I found that kind of hit or miss just in my experience. So I added my buttermilk slowly to my dry mixture until it formed a wet mass. You wanna make sure you have enough liquid to your dough. You don't want it to be too dry and stiff. And then once everything is combined, switch it to a dough hook if you're using a stand mixer. If not, turn it out onto a surface and begin kneading. In a stand mixer, you're gonna knead this for about 10 minutes. It's gonna be a little bit longer if you're kneading by hand. So what you're looking for is the dough to reach a temperature about 77 degrees, and it should pass the window pane test. This means when you stretch the dough, it should become very stretchy, thin, and transparent, and light should be able to pass through it. So this tells you that enough gluten has formed that you're gonna have the right texture for your dough. So once that happens, you're going to take the dough out of the bowl, wash your bowl, oil it lightly, and oil the top of your dough ball lightly, place the dough back in the oil bowl, and cover it. And you're going to allow it to rise for its first rise. And this can take anywhere from one to two hours, depending on how warm your environment is. So once the dough ball has doubled, you're now going to divide the dough into six equal pieces. I used a scale and it worked out to be about 83 to 85 gram balls. And then you're gonna shape them by stretching the dough and turning it under. You're gonna make little boules, and then you're gonna use the sides of your hands to kind of pinch and roll to kind of tighten the surface of the ball. Now you're gonna lightly oil these, wrap them in plastic wrap, 
and then allow them to proof for the second time. And this should take anywhere from 60 to 90 minutes. And that is what we have here. And now we are ready to cook. So traditionally these are cooked on a griddle or a skillet, but you can also cook these in a 350 degree oven as well. I love English muffins for breakfast sandwiches. They make great little pizzas. I just love their serving size and just slathered in butter and hot. So delicious. The biggest reason why I love this book so much is how thorough it is. For example, so cook these five to eight minutes or until the bottom of the dough cannot cook any longer without burning. So you really, really want to cook these. So while this is toasting up, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about this shirt. I'm so proud of it, I designed it, and all the proceeds from the sales of this shirt will be going to charity. I'm gonna be giving it to Give Directly, which is a nonprofit organization that gives cash donations directly to families and those that are most impacted by the outbreak. So I'm so happy to be able to do that. And if you can support it, then I'd be so appreciative. Thanks so much. And lightly place it onto the griddle. There we go. And the thermostat is set for 350 degrees. Oh, I love that sizzle. Can you hear that? <gasps> and this griddle gets really hot. Griddle buns, griddle buns. Okay. He said they'll brown really quickly. Okay, they're browning. Okay. All right, so I also set a timer because I want to make sure I cook these for long enough. We don't want to have raw dough in the middle, but five to eight minutes. It is smelling lovely already. It smells kind of like pizza dough or something. It's kind of that toasted, bready, lovely smell. You can see that they're getting nice and brown. Look at that. So I would be tempted already to turn these over because they're already getting so golden. But Peter says, let it go. Do, 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 do. They're so cute. I love risen dough. They're just, oh. I want to push them and mush them and punch them and kiss them. La, 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 la. Okay, I'm going to turn this over now. It's been five minutes. Look. See, that almost looks burnt. Okay, this one, yep. These look so cute. Look how puffy they are. Look at this one. Okay. <sighs> Look how chubby these are. They're so cute. Have you ever had English muffins so chubby before? They've browned as much as they can brown without burning. Now we've transferred them to a baking sheet. We're gonna put them in a 350 degree oven for five to eight minutes, just to make sure that the middles of our muffins are completely cooked. Now, if you don't have an oven, you would turn the heat down to low and take a pot lid and place that on top of your muffins to kind of create an oven to finish the cooking process of the English muffins. Alrighty, I am back and look at my beautiful English muffin. Isn't it gorgeous? I have to admit, I have not waited the requisite 30 minutes because I need to eat this. This is warm and beautiful. So let's use our fork, pop this open, get some butter on it. Yeah. Pop, 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 pop. I'm so excited about this. I'm gonna take my fork. I'm gonna go all around the perimeter. Oh, this is hot. And what this does is it creates a nice little ragged surface. As opposed to if we cut this with a knife, which will make it nice and smooth, if we use a fork, we'll get all oak. Okay. Are you seeing this? <sighs> Isn't that gorgeous? Yes, yes. Slather that with some butter. Alrighty, the moment I have been waiting for. Let's give the English muffin a taste. Itadakimasu. Mmm. Mmm. That's lovely. The warmth of the English muffin completely melted the butter. It falls into all those little holes and valleys that we created. The bottom has a slight bit of crispness. The crumb is chewy and soft. 
delicious. I can't wait to see how these will toast up tomorrow. Alrighty, let's have one of my other favorite things. Let's have it with some honey. Drizzle this onto the muffin. Now this is honey from my own hives. Alrighty, give thanks. The bread has a lovely yeasty flavor, but the texture is so nice. It's very moist and the crumb is slightly chewy and just... So there you have it. That's how you can make homemade English muffins. Absolutely delicious. A cinch to make. You can make them on a skillet, make them on a griddle. You don't need an oven. An oven does help to cook them at the very end, but certainly not required. Just put a lid right on top of your griddle, set on low. Give them a couple flips in five to eight minutes you'll have perfectly cooked english muffins wait a few minutes before you eat them thanks so much for watching i hope you guys enjoyed that one i hope you guys learned something big thanks to BetterHelp for sponsoring this video if you'd like to get 10 percent off your first month visit betterhelp.com that's betterhelp h-e-l-p dot com slash emmy to receive 10 percent off your first month Thanks again for watching. Please share this video with your friends. Follow me on social media, like this video, subscribe, and I shall see you in the next one. Toodaloo. Take care. Bye.